in the rebound, getting her first minutes. Clark, the flick ahead. Oh, what a dime from Clark. Hit by Clark. Here's Clark ahead of the field. Caitlin Clark has her first all-star point. Caitlin Clark got her revenge on Team USA after beating them 117 to 109. But if we're being honest, it was more than just beating them. She broke another record, teamed up with Angel Reese, and put some people in their place. Now, if you want to know who that is and where we're going in this video, then stick around. Cheryl Reeve faced a ton of backlash after Caitlin Clark's all-star win. I mean, it kind of felt like Caitlin took it personally when she wasn't selected on the Olympic roster. Even though many fans were left dumbfounded why Caitlin wasn't on the team, the fever let her cook and let me tell you. She came out with a full course meal. On top of beating Team USA, she also set the WNBA All-Star Game rookie assists record with 10 assists. I'd also say another big moment from that weekend was watching Caitlin and Angel Reese team up together. Caitlin Clark to Angel Reese. Team USA was the heavy favorites during this game. After all, they were supposed to be the best team in the nation, seeing as they were put together in an extremely thorough selection process. On top of that, this was the second time Caitlin had beaten Cheryl Reeves since the Olympic roster announcement. She also beat her Minnesota Lynx in their home arena back on July 14th, and well, made a statement. Clark. Uh-oh. Oh, Clark, please! Uh-oh. At this point, fans were just throwing it in her face. Cheryl Reeve versus Caitlin Clark, 0 and 2. Cheryl Reeve after her Team USA loses to Arike Ogunbowale and Caitlin Clark. So, I mean, it's pretty safe to say that Caitlin should have been on the team. Her presence would have significantly impacted women's basketball worldwide, representing America on an international stage. It makes me think of when Michael Jordan played in his first Summer Olympics in 1984. He helped bring a gold medal home and averaged 17 points per game, which is what she is doing right now. I wonder what she could have done during the Olympics, playing with other key players in the W. I mean, look at how she performed with the all-star team. Uh, we didn't play real defense. <laughs> All right, fair assessment. Nice pass from like Clark. Right yeah. I love the timing of this quick interview with Cheryl Reed. Look at Caitlin's dime while she comments we didn't play real defense. And then her comment after the play. And then within the same minute, before Team USA can even get back, she pulls off Getting this. Her play. first minutes, Clark, the flick ahead. Oh, what a dime. Now, playing with Angel Reese had fans wondering what they would do together. And well, they did not disappoint. The viewership alone set another benchmark, with 3.442 million views becoming the biggest audience ever and over triple the previous All-Star viewership record at 1.441 million back in 2003. Caitlin and Angel were the first rookies since 2014 to join the All-Star roster, and both of them set rookie records. As we mentioned earlier, Caitlin had the rookie record for assists, but we also want to mention that Angel set the record as the first rookie to have a double-double in an All-Star star game. It was actually fun seeing both of them play together. And believe it or not, even Angel mentioned she was excited to play with Caitlin. I'm excited. Um, this is going to be first of many. I know we're going to be all-star teams together in the future, um, Olympic teams together. I'm just excited just to be here in this moment and everybody coming and being able to watch. I know it's going to be a sold out crowd. So women's sports is going into a rise and I'm happy. The All-Star team showed up. In fact, before the game, Coach Cheryl Miller mentioned in an interview how badly they wanted to beat the U.S. team. And I'm like, holy smokes, what an opportunity. And I was excited, like really, really excited, till I found out that the team I'm coaching wants to beat the brakes off our Olympic team. I'm like, okay, the pressure's on. So... Now we got a game, folks. The interesting part about this game was they seemed to play harder than the NBA All-Star game. Both these teams performed and showed us the competition that it felt to be lacking in the NBA All-Star game. But what made this All-Star game special was its intensity. Unlike previous years, where players seemed less focused on winning, Caitlin's determination to win set the tone and ultimately spoke of her leadership once again. This was her mindset going into the game. We wanted to compete and help prepare the Olympic team for Paris. I mean, look at the way they were guarding Caitlin. Kelsey Plum was on her like it was Game 7, and even moments of double team it was quite clear that Team USA was focused on stopping Caitlyn. But I mean, with the way Caitlyn was passing during this game, it was hard to stop because she could either finesse you with a three-pointer or send off a dime when you least expect it. But I guess you should expect that from the WNBA assist leader. Further, Caitlyn even shut down Stephen A. Smith. Obviously, there's context to that video since he was hyping up Aja Wilson, but he's also basically saying that Team USA is going to dominate the All-Star team. And to their surprise, you already know what happened. Caitlyn is just showing up left, right, and center, and you can't get rid of her. She's even shut shutting down the Rookie of the Year conversation after becoming Rookie of the Month for the second time. I mean, look at what she did in July before the All-Star Game. She became the first ever rookie to put up a triple-double and beat the New York Liberty, who are currently the first place team in the league. Even during that game, the Liberty were favored to win, seeing as they had beaten the Fever in the last three games prior to this one. But with Caitlin's triple-double, she also led the Fever with 19 points in a win that took the Liberty off guard. And that was only the beginning. And the first triple-double for a rookie, Caitlin Clark has it! History for the 
Fever rookie. A week and a half later, Caitlin had three records in the same night against Dallas. But Cowan, who couldn't finish, behind the back again for Clark, give her another assist. First, she set the WNBA record for the most assists in a single game at 19, breaking Tisha Penichero's record at 16 and hasn't been broken since 1998, and also became the new leader in assists per game in the W. Second, she set a franchise record for assists in a season at 213 and is closing in on Tisha Penichero's single season rookie record of 225, which also hasn't been broken since 1998. On on top of that, she's also en route toward the all-time single-season assist record at 316, set by Alyssa Thomas from last season. So if Caitlin can stay healthy and keep up the pace, she'll become the all-time assist leader right in year one. We had a chance to ask Caitlin how is she taking care of herself. Great pass! Third, she became the second rookie in WNBA history to go over 200 assists in a season, also joining Tisha Penichero mentioned earlier. And if you want to go the extra mile on records in July, she also recorded the most double-doubles in a season by a rookie guard. So becoming Rookie of the Month was a no-brainer, and yet Cheryl Reeve disregarded Caitlin. That said, she was likely not the person who put the team together either. Obviously, this game plan was set in motion months before the WNBA season began, but Team USA could have still held a spot just in case. Now, even though it wasn't likely that Reeve put the team together, she still didn't show much interest in Caitlin being part of the team either. During All-Star Weekend, when asked if there was any second guessing on not having Caitlin part of the team, her answer was a straight no. But let's be real, her answer doesn't have much weight to it at this point, because one, she couldn't beat Caitlin, and two, she didn't really put the team together anyway. That said, on July July 28th, after everything was said and done, Dawn Staley, who was part of the Team USA selection process, came out with this. Um, Caitlin is just a rookie in the WNBA. Uh, wasn't playing bad, but wasn't playing like she's playing now. If we had to do it all over again, the way that she's playing, um, she would be in really high consideration of making the team because she is playing head and shoulders above a lot of people. So let that one sink in. Now on the flip side, going back to All-Star Weekend, Caitlin had commented her thoughts on this team after beating them, which also also continues to set her apart as a leader. They're really good. They have plenty of talent on that team. And I think four years prior, I'm pretty sure the team WNBA beat Team USA. Um, they were perfectly fine in the Olympics. Like, um, I think it, if anything, it shows how good this league is. You know, they could have picked any combination of 12 players and probably been really, really successful. So, you know, this is a great opportunity to, you know, help prepare them for Paris and they are going to be just fine. They're, they're going to win gold and dominate. So I'm not, I'm not worried. <laughs> and if we're being honest, Caitlin is right. Historically, the women's U.S. team hasn't lost an Olympic game since 1992. They're by far the most successful international women's basketball team, winning nine of the 11 Olympic tournaments they've been a part of and have been the gold medal winners since 1996. And just like Caitlin said, they even lost to the WNBA All-Star team back in 2020 prior to heading to Tokyo and still won gold. So moving forward, it's an obvious factor that she'll go on to play on the team in 2028, but watching Caitlin produce in the All-Star game really showed how much of an impact her playmaking will be as she will easily become one of the best playmakers in WNBA history.